thank you for joining me once again. My name is Ollie. Um, if you're familiar with me, welcome back. If you're not so familiar, well, I like to talk about guitars, and that's what I'm going to do today. Um, so, you clicked on the link so you know that I'm currently having a look at this brand new for 2020 Epiphone Firebird in vintage Sunburst. I will also be comparing it to my personal uh, to Gibson Firebird from 2019 range in Cardinal Red. Uh, so yeah. Firebirds. Gotta love them. Um, introduced back in 1963. Uh, Gibson got on board um, a gentleman whose name escapes me from the car industry uh, to design a guitar that would, you know, win over win over players because you know Fender was having so much success with, you know, the Tele and the Strat, um, amongst other shapes. Uh, you know, in the 50s they tried to introduce the Flying V, the Explorer. It didn't really work. They became popular later on. In 1963, when they got the um, the car gentleman involved. Basically, he he took. You may see it's inside, inspired by. He took the uh, Explorer shape and you know changed it, made it made it sexier. Basically, um, of course, it is inspired by you know car designs. Um, we've got this lovely strip down the middle here, and you know the shape's just a bit nicer. Um, this is what's called a reverse firebird. The, un the not common one is called a non-reverse, and it looks a bit like a Jazzmaster or something. Um, so yeah, the rust fiber here, and yeah, rock and roll history was born. You know, when you when you think um, when you think fiber, I think probably one of the most important players is a gentleman called Johnny Winter, who's an incredible guitarist. I would recommend you check him out. Um, yeah, look, I don't I don't care who you are, where you come from, what your name is, unless it's, unless it's Johnny Winter. You, what your favorite color is, you need to have one of these guitars in your collection. The pickups, you know, they, they don't sound like other pickups. It's like a Rick and Backer. Like, if you want to get that sound, you got to get that guitar. In terms of the pickups, let, let's start. Let's start with the electronics this time. Why not? Firebirds are most notable for having firebird pickups. Commonly confused with mini humbuckers, which are similar but not exactly the same. Um, they're probably slightly less output than mini humbuckers and they don't have height adjustable pole pieces like mini humbuckers do. Um, I'd say it's probably a bit of a tighter, a tighter sound than they give you. Um, the most incredible thing, I think, between the Epiphone and the Gibson model uh, these are these are Epiphone. I think they're called Probucker Firebird pickups. Those are Gibson Firebird pickups. It's crazy how close they sound. The I think my, my friend was um, listening in before. He said that the, the Gibson sounds like an already produced guitar. It sounds like a guitar you know you've, you've tightened up a little bit, you've compressed it a little bit, maybe done some EQing. Whereas I think the Epiphone probably sounds a bit a bit more wild and raw. Which you know maybe maybe you like that. Um, but yeah, incredible sounding pickups. It's funny, on the Epiphone versus the Gibson, I think the pickup mounting here, I'm not sure you know, what material, whether it's plastic or metal, but it's not as raised as on the Gibson. I find um, I have a tendency to you know, knock my hand on the edges of the pickups surrounding the Gibson. Sometimes it actually hurts, but you know, it's a red guitar, so if I start bleeding all over it, no one's gonna notice. <laughs> Exactly the same in that regard. Uh, so famously, um, this is one of the few or one of the only Gibsons that has what's called a completely three-neck design. That being that from the very tip of the guitar right to the very bottom is actually one long piece of, or pieces of timber. So one of the hallmark features of the Firebird being that it's a nine-piece sort of assortment of timbers 
um, of mahogany and walnut. If I'm not mistaken, it's five slats of mahogany with four of walnut. Maybe the other way around. Um, which, of course, you can see on the vintage sunburst. Uh, you, co of course, can't see it on the cardinal red because, you know, it's covered up by the finish. But, yeah, I love how they do the little black first. So yeah, both of them have the exact same body wood. I can imagine, you know, the Gibson probably has higher, higher grade timber, um, which makes it a bit more resonant, but, you know. <coughs> yeah. In terms of electronics, as far as I'm aware, both of them do have CTS pots. I know on my Epiphone um, SG special video, there was a bit of confusion because the website and it says that the original series instruments inspired by Gibson all have CTS pots, but it doesn't say it down below. Again, I'm assuming this has CTS pots because the website says that it does, but please feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. I don't pretend to be the expert and most knowledgeable person in the world. This is just what I can see. So CTS pots, um, to volume, to tone. Uh, in terms of the design, um, the, the Gibson has you know your black with silver tops, and this is your arm. Um, the gold with silver tops there. Um, switch chips, um, black switch chip there, a white switch chip, I think. The Gibson does feel a little bit more secure. You know, you know, I think as guitarists we can all appreciate, you know, when you when you feel a really good quality switch. I know like on my um, my custom shop strat, it's very satisfying. It's a nice, it's a nice switch to um to flip. Uh, in terms of the tailpiece and the bridge on this guitar, um, so this is what's called Epiphone's Lock Tone uh, Stop Bar Tailpiece and Tunematic Bridge. Um, basically, as I've explained in other videos, um, if you don't know, the Lock Tone Bridge is basically, you know, it's a classic thing where you're changing the strings and then um, this tailpiece basically falls off the guitar. It dings the guitar, it goes under a road case, um, the cat eats it, <laughs> basically, you know, it, it's gone. So that locks it in, and there were also studies done by Epiphone when they were designing the lock tone, is that it creates a tighter grip on the actual studs, increases the resonance, and actually makes the guitar you know, sound a little bit better, more sustained. Um, so yeah, depends how into you know that tonal stuff you get. Whilst on the Gibson we have a Nashville style uh, TOM bridge and tailpiece, uh, that guy being Alan as well. So, uh, yeah, that's the tailpiece. <laughs> one of the main differences you're going to get is the actual finish over the body. So again, Epiphone don't specify, but I can only assume this is some sort of polyurethane finish um, versus the nitrocellulose finish, which of course is included on Gibson instruments. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's funny because nitro, it's not as hardy. Like it's, it's not going to take as much beating as poly finishes. It's going to age over time. It's going to start, you know, chipping away and all that. But I think as guitarists, we sort of, we like that. It's like, you know, when you've got your pair of Doc Martens you've had for, you know, four or five years and they're beaten up and they're nice and worn in and, you know, it's cool. It's really, they've really become, you know, your shoes or your guitar. So it, it's strange that, you know, I know personally, I prefer Nitro because I know that it's going to wear and, you know, where my arm sits and all that. It's also, you know, as guitarists, we, we like to, you know, have something that plays nice. We like to have something that sounds nice and looks nice, but what about it smells nice? This is one of those weird things that I think non-guitar players don't really understand, but nitrocellulose guitars smell lovely. I don't know what it is or how they do it, um, but I don't know, there's just something incredible about opening up a use in this case and that it just like, it hits you in the face and it's like, yes, that's it. Um, but it's interesting because to go off topic a tiny little bit, <clears throat> I've got a 1991 Gibson SG Jr. I can only assume that it's a nitro finish, it doesn't actually smell. So I was talking to one of my friends earlier and we proposed that maybe the actual cases that the instrument kind of influence the smell and that maybe nitrocellulose absorbs smell a little bit better. So yeah, body finishes, let's get back to the guitars. Um, so this is where things start to get a little bit nicer. We've been very, very similar between the Epiphone and the Gibson so far. 
the neck to me, or the fretboard and frets is where things start to change. Um, so we do have low frets on this guitar, <coughs> uh, 22 of them. Um, this has got an Indian laurel fretboard. Um, so laurel, of course, being cheaper timber. Um, I think it's, you know, it, it's meant to look like rosewood, like we have on the Gibson, but it's not quite as nice. Um, of course, you know, you can hydrate it, sort of bring up scratch a little bit more, but you know, we do like to have rosewood on the guitars. Um, on the Epiphone, that is, you know, they don't specify anything fancy with the frets. When we go over to Gibson land, um, they've started doing what's, cry what's called cryogenically freezing. So they're basically, they, I think it was 300 degrees below they bring it to. Um, they freeze it and then they sort of let it heat up naturally back to room temperature. The idea being that it strengthens the actual frets but without making them harder and brittle, which basically means you're not going to need refrets as much because um, they're going to take a bit more of the beating and last for a lot longer. So yeah, cryogenic frets. Um, of course, you know, again a hallmark of you know Gibson instruments. You're going to have um, not only you know is the binding going to be a little bit nicer here. It's sort of you know you can sort of see you know lines where it wasn't done quite perfectly, um, but the binding is actually going to go over the frets, over the edges of the frets on the Gibson. Uh, I think the idea being you know, called nibs or nubs or something. Um, the idea being that I think it's going to stop it, you know, the fret from potentially sprouting off the fretboard as you know wood shrinks or expands or the guitar gets older. That's sort of like a safeguard. Um, so yeah, the binding is like a very, very white on the Gibson, where it's more of like a, a vintage off-white on the Epiphone here, which, you know, I think it looks nice against the uh, vintage first actually, so yeah, there's that. Uh, moving up, both have acrylic trapezoid inlays by the way. Um, so on Epiphone instruments, we generally have what's called a graph tech nut, uh, which is sort of, yeah, a graphite material that I think especially is handy on instruments that, you know, have this typical three-a-side Gibson headstock. It helps with, you know, string slipping and keeping it in tune a little bit more. Um, not, probably not such an issue on the uh, Firebird headstock because there's sort of like a straighter string pull as you go down. Um, but yeah, gra graph tech on these. On the Gibson, it's what's called a tech toy nut. There isn't actually a huge amount of information on technoid, tectoid nuts on the internet. As far as I'm aware, it's just Gibson's own version of these graph tech nuts. Um, it's meant to be self-lubricating, um, meaning you, know, you don't need to put nut sauce or you know pencil in there or something. <laughs> gave these two guitars to someone, the Epiphone and Gibson logos are actually just on the truss rod covers. So you could swap them around, you could take them off and you could give them to people and say, you know, which ones you prefer. And I'll, you know, if they're not too clued on to the binding and the frets and all that, then they might not be able to draw the difference. Um, if they close their eyes, maybe. But yeah, I think the thing that has surprised me most, it, it's, you know, of course the Gibson is a better instrument. As well, it should be, you know, it's several thousand dollars more. It's how close the Epiphone gets to the Gibson's performance, sound, and feel is what, what surprises me. Epiphones aren't really set up as nicely out of the factory. You do need to, you know, take it to someone that really knows what they're doing. If you're buying one, say to the guys, like, hey, I'm giving you, you know, here in, here in Australia, these are just over a thousand dollars. Say, hey guys, like I've just given you a grand, can you please, you know, go over and make sure it's good, like adjust the neck for me, adjust the action, the intonation, to make sure that it's everything that it can be. Because once you spend some time with these new Epiphone instruments, they can really, really hold their own. They can really hold their own against Gibson instruments, which is it surprised me. Um, back to the specs. Let's turn it over just to the back of the headstock. Uh, so both have Grover tuners, um, these just say Grover Mini uh, 18 to 1 ratio tuners, um, or as the Gibson website specifies, uh, Grover Rotomatic tuners. I didn't need to tune these two tires at all once I started doing the demos, they stayed in tune just fine, um, which of course, you know, when you're playing a Gibson style instrument, you're always a bit wary about that. 
handcrafted in China, made in the USA. Of course, we come to expect that. Um, so yeah, guys, Gibsons are good. There aren't really a lot of specs on them. <laughs> Means I can get through things relatively quickly. Like, like I've said a couple of times at the point of this video, Epiphone, in 2020, they've really started to get closer, closer to that Gibson quality. I mean, you know, it used to be you had to you had to buy a Gibson if you wanted to get that TV yellow um, special, the Les Paul special, um, if you wanted to get the you know the SG specials and all that. But they now they're bringing these models in. You can get the Epiphone, you know, the Flying V. You can get the Epiphone Explorer. You can get the Firebird. You can get all of these finishes. So what, when it comes down to it, if you can afford the Gibson, great, go for it. I think there is a difference between the two guitars. Um, but you know, if you're going to be you know, saving for years and years and years and you know, really, really stressing over it and spending that money, then the Epiphone is really, really going to do the job for you. You can upgrade the pickups if you want to. Again, I, I wouldn't really say the guitars sound better than each other, they're just different. You're probably going to need to do a little bit more, you know, post. Maybe you'll need to get, you know, a compressor or an EQ pedal or something to sort of rein this in a little bit. But yeah, guys, Epiphone are really, really doing great favors for guitarists because, you know, we can't all afford the Gibson. I'm very lucky. I'm very, very lucky to have that instrument. I absolutely love it. Um, but, you know, if I was looking for something that could just be like a tour beater or something, or, you know, I can fly around the world or go to gigs, I'm not going to be scared about someone stealing it or breaking when I'm flying with it. They're solid instruments. They really, really are great. It'll be interesting to see if Epiphone come out with any, um, any different designs um, for, you know, getting closer to the Gibson designs, whether they're going to give us, you know, the, the Firebird 12, which is a 12 string. There's a couple of different models um, out there. I think there's the one, there's the three, there's the five, there's the seven. Um, there's the Firebird X, which is that notorious video that we all saw last year. Make sure you YouTube the Gibson Firebird X mishap if you, if you haven't seen it. But yeah, guys, I think you'll be able to hear it for yourselves uh, between the two comparisons. You can hear a difference, but they are quite, quite close. And for, for the amount of money that you're going to be saving, you're not getting a hard case. Maybe you'll want to look into one of them. You will be saving money, and you will be getting a great guitar. Don't think you're getting, you know, the, the, the cheap version or you know, compromising in, in any way, shape, or form. This guy can deliver. It looks the part. It feels the part, and it sounds great. So, um, yeah, guys. If you like the video, please feel free to give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more in the future, you can subscribe to my channel as well. Um, I've got plenty of videos out already with other exciting things, so you can check them out. So, yeah guys, thanks for checking it out. Again, this has been the brand new for 2020 Epiphone Firebird Vintage Sunburst and me comparing it to my 2019 Cardinal Red Gibson. Thanks guys, I'll see you next time.